This video is sponsored by OWC. Apple kicked off its first virtual WWDC keynote and announced a ton of new updates to all of its operating systems. And so in this video, we're gonna go over everything that Apple announced at WWDC 2020. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications whenever we share a video. Apple announced a lot of new updates this year and starting things off with iOS 14, which brings us a slew of new features like a redesigned today view for widgets with more data and sizes available, but perhaps the biggest change to the home screen comes with widgets being added directly to your home screen, as well as customizing what apps slash pages can be seen or hidden. There's also a new smart stack widget that allows users to swipe through multiple different widgets and can be automatically updated for the right moment of the day. Calendar or news in the morning, and activity summaries in the evening, and much more. There's a new way to view all of your apps with the app library. So gone are the days of having to keep all of your apps on different pages or folders scattered throughout your phone. Now apps are sorted into different categories with app suggestions and most recently added at the top. Most used apps within a specific category are also at the top for quick access. iOS 14 also brings in full picture and picture support with users being able to drag and drop a video wherever they would like on the screen, pinch to resize, or swipe off the screen entirely, but you can keep that video playing in the background iOS 14 also brings in a bunch of redesigned apps and services to our iPhones, starting off with Siri, which has been designed to be less intrusive. Siri now pops up at the bottom, but stays out of the way of what's going on the rest of the screen. So for example, if you ask for weather updates, a notification appears at the top instead of taking up your entire screen. You can even ask Siri to send an audio message to your friends and family too. There is a new Translate app coming to iOS 14 that can work completely offline and offers side-by-side -side conversation mode for assistance with speaking to others in a foreign country while potentially traveling. Messages got a pretty hefty update with options to now pin conversations to the top of your list, and if a notification comes through from a pinned conversation, a cool animation and information goes next to that person's profile. Apple added new Memoji hair and headwear styles, and you can now add a mask to your Memoji as well. There's also new age ranges for Memojis and a hug, fist bump, and blush Memoji stickers. Group chats just become a whole lot better to be a part of, with inline replies being added that can be viewed as a thread or its own separate conversation, and users can also mention specific people in a group chat, allowing you to mute the conversation entirely, but still receive important notifications when your name is specifically mentioned. Maps now offers a new guide feature to discover great places to eat, shop, and more. Guides can be saved and auto-updates when new places are added. A cycling mode has also been added with notifications for when potential stairs might appear during a route or options to avoid stairs altogether and notifications for steep hills. For those with electric cars, there's a new EV routing option available that automatically plans your route based on charging stations. CarPlay now offers new wallpaper options in categories like parking, EV charging, and quick food ordering. Apple has also introduced Car Key, which will be featured first on the new 2021 BMW 5 Series and allows users to unlock the car with their iPhone and start the car by placing the phone on the wireless pad and pushing the ignition to start. Keys can be shared with family and friends via messages with restricted access available and can be turned off if the phone is lost via iCloud. Support for Car Key will be activated in iOS 13 and should see much wider support in other cars starting next year. Apple also introduced App Clips, a feature that shows a small part of an app designed to get the information and access you need from an app faster and easier. App Clips start as a card and with just a tap launches the section of the app that you need. There's no need to enter credit card or sign up for an account as App Clips takes advantage of Apple Pay and sign in with Apple. App Clips also works inside of Safari, Messages, Maps, NFC tags and QR codes, and all new Apple-designed App Clip code that can be used by tapping or scanning with camera for access. 
Moving on to iPad OS 14, which brings users pretty much everything that we just talked about in iOS 14, like redesigned widgets and the ability to add those widgets to your home screen, as well as a new sidebar that will be present inside of most Apple native apps and available for developers to integrate too. The sidebar gives you access to various folders or sections inside of the Photos app while showcasing large photos in the rest of the app. This gives you the ability to drag and drop photos to different sections or folders on the sidebar. The same could be done with notes in the notes app, files in the files app, and even inside of the music app. Siri has also been redesigned for iPadOS 14 and is now limited to the bottom right corner of the screen to be less intrusive. Speaking of less intrusive, phone calls on iPads are no longer a full screen affair, but simply a notification coming in from the top. In fact, this feature also works on the iPhone as well, which is actually huge news for a lot of people out there, as most of us found it super annoying that your entire screen gets interrupted by a phone call. Now you can just tap on the notification to answer or flick it to reject. Search has been updated to be much more like macOS Spotlight and is now a compact design that floats over the home screen or within applications. Universal Search is available for launching applications, finding contacts, documents, and you can even search within applications or find out information about people or places, as well as just perform simple web searches. The Apple Pencil received a hefty update of new features, including the biggest feature, Scribble. Scribble lets you handwrite text into any field, which can then be automatically converted into text. You can even draw shapes that can be converted into, well, better versions of those shapes, and handwritten text can be selected and changed, moved, or erased on the fly. You can write directly into search bars inside of Safari or handwrite reminders in the Reminders app that can be switched to text instantly. Apple's AirPods software received its own update announcement with a couple of new features being added to AirPods and AirPods Pro, most notably being automatic detection and switching between devices, as well as a new spatial audio feature for AirPods Pro owners. Spatial audio gives users the ability to experience state-of-the-art surround sound from their AirPods. It applies directional audio filters and subtly changes the frequencies to create that immersive experience. It even adjusts and tracks your head movements as well as movements from your device too. Moving on to watchOS 7, which brings users the ability to create custom watch faces and share those watch faces with others or discover new watch faces with the new face sharing feature. Users can discover curated watch faces on websites or can simply share with users directly. Simply press add Apple watch face and you're all set. WatchOS also brings all of the new map updates from iOS and even offers new workout modes like dance, core training, functional strength training, and cooldown. Apple also introduced a new sleep tracking mode for WatchOS, which can allow users to track their sleep as well as create new bedtime routines and better sleep habits with the help of their Apple Watch and iPhone. All of the sleep information can be found inside of the health app on your iOS device. Another neat feature that will certainly help users out these days is automatic detection for hand washing, which now plays a countdown and alerts users when they've ended too soon or when it's time to stop washing. Apple focused a lot on privacy and home this year with new privacy features being added, like the ability to migrate your existing account with a website to work with sign in with Apple. There's new tracking control functionality that will give users an alert asking if an app can track you and new privacy policy summary information to see what exactly developers are asking for in order to use the app. On the home side, HomeKit has now been open sourced and Apple has partnered with Amazon and Google in order to make more devices compatible with HomeKit and the Home app. The Home app also features new adaptive lighting features, which will adjust color temperature based on the time of day, and cameras will now have activity zones, facial recognition, and notifications from your doorbell as to who exactly is at your door from your HomePod. The notification and live feed can also be brought up on your Apple TV as well. And quickly speaking of Apple TV, Apple added support for picture-in-picture. -picture. Finally, Apple concluded the event with the new version of macOS, macOS Big Sur, and it's a very big update. macOS Big Sur brings a huge redesign to the entire operating system, including a new dock and app icons. The sidebar from iPadOS is also available, and all native apps have been refreshed to fit this design scheme, as well as be more in line with the iOS and iPadOS counterparts. 
Maps and Messages have received all of the new updates that we talked about earlier, and Safari has been updated to not only improve page load times by up to 50%, but add a slew of new privacy features as well. There's a new privacy support icon in the toolbar, and users can even monitor passwords to see if anything has been compromised during a data breach. Safari extensions have become more powerful and are also featured inside of the Mac App Store with new privacy protections available for extensions too. There's also a redesigned start page which allows users to have custom background images and can even add more functionality and customizations by clicking the icon in the bottom right corner. Tabs have also been updated to show icon previews. You can close all tabs from the left or the right, as well as built-in translation throughout Safari. Just tap the translate icon in the search bar and watch translation happen in real time. Apple has also officially announced that it will be switching its processors from Intel to its own custom Apple Silicon. ARM-based Macs will now offer better performance with lower power consumption, advanced power management, secure enclave for its best-in-class security, better graphics performance, neural engine and machine learning improvements, and new native apps designed specifically for ARM-based Macs. Apps like Logic Pro and Final Cut Pro will be available on day one, and Apple showed off a demo of just how powerful the A12Z processor running with only 16 gigabytes of RAM can be while video editing, playing back a full 4K timeline inside of Final Cut Pro, and adding effects or transitions during playback. In fact, it even played multiple streams of 4K video at the same time with absolutely no lag or stutter. Something that really does blow my mind as a video editor who uses Final Cut Pro and really can't do that with the machines that I'm working on today. Apple expects to ship ARM-based Macs later this year with hopes for a full transition in two years. But don't worry, Intel Macs will still receive software updates for many years to come, especially during this transition. There has been a ton of new features added to each platform and we'll go hands-on with everything over the next couple of weeks, so be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss those videos. Before we end today's video, I want to give you more information about today's sponsor, OWC. OWC offers a wide range of products for your Mac like internal hard drives and SSDs, memory, Thunderbolt 3 docks, and much more. OWC has also started doubling storage capacities for some of its more popular products, such as the Aura P12 SSDs, the award-winning Envoy Pro EX Thunderbolt 3 and Envoy Pro EX USB-C external drives, which can now rock up to four terabytes of storage space, and the Excelsior 4M2 PCIe SSD, which can deliver crazy speeds of 6,000 megabits per second, can now come in a giant 16 terabyte capacity. The Thunderblade drive also has been updated to 16 terabytes, which is just crazy to think about. For more information about these drives or any other products that OWC has to offer, go ahead and click the link in the description down below. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you around in the next video.